What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlaw here. So we're talking about a few different topics in this video here today. Really, three. Final Destination 6 update. Uh, an update regarding Jeepers Creepers, a slight update, and then the last thing would be a Scream 7 theory. So just start off with Final Destination 6. Final Destination 6 is now working under a title called Final Destination Bloodlines, and a small plot synopsis has been shared. Now this info is coming from Hollywood North Buzz, who has listings for production that will take productions that will take place in Canada later this year. Now, Final Destination 6 is alleged to film in Vancouver from July 17th through September 8th. The film will allegedly revolve around a group of first responders who escaped death's grasp and and then they start to be killed by increasingly unlikely and killer mishaps. Now, the reason that was interesting to read was because I recalled back in 2020, producer Greg Perry had this to say when speaking with Digital Spy about Final Destination 6, which has actually been reported off and on as far back as 2019. But this is what he had to say was being toyed with for an idea for six. He said, we're toying with having it take place in the world of first responders, EMTs, firemen, and police. These people deal with death on the front lines every day and make choices that can cause people to live or die. We rely on their good judgment, expertise, and calm demeanor. So why not put those people in the nightmare situation where every choice can bring about life and death, but now for themselves. We're thinking that world might be an interesting way into a Final Destination movie and one which can also generate unique set pieces in a very credible way. Now, it seems those remarks from 2020 have actually translated into what we will still be getting for Final Destination 6, which makes me very happy. Jeffrey Reddick, who is the or Reddick, who is the series creator, has stated on Twitter recently that something better than a cruise ship is coming because I know that's been an idea tossed around. So I'm assuming this is the something better he's referring to because it's leaps and bounds better. This concept being applied to the lives of people who already sacrificed their well-beings to serve the public, I think it's a great way to revive the series and have timely commentary on the world we live in today, while also allowing another opportunity for us to have characters we can relate to and sympathize for beyond just being people added to the body count and being excited to see how they can die. We'll actually will care if they live or die now. Not that we haven't before, but I don't think me personally, I haven't cared since Final Destination 3. That was the last time I was really, really connected to any characters in this series. But jumping into Jeepers Creepers, Eva Green, now this has, she is of course never been in a Jeepers Creepers movie, but Eva Green, an actress who you may know from Casino Royale, if you're into James Bond, recently won a lawsuit that involved Jake Seal and his Black Hanger Studios. So what does that have to do with Jeepers Creepers? Jake Seal is the man who has helped produce Jeepers Creepers 3 and 4. Both considered trash, but of course we know 4 takes the cake as the ultimate trash. Now what's wrong with Jake Seal, you might be asking? Well, this project that Eva Green was going to participate in that has now been settled in a lawsuit had some financial issues and Jake Seal stepped in to manage the film, which led to Eva fearing that a shitty B movie could kill her career. Now, according to private WhatsApp messages brought up during the case, she thought that Jake Seal's managing was a terrible decision and called him a devil and referred to Black Hanger employees as peasants. Keep in mind, Black Hanger is where Jeepers Creepers 4 was shot. So again, you might be asking, what's the update here regarding Jeepers Creepers? The update is that once again, Jake Seal, the producer involved with 4, I'm assuming he was he much more heavily involved with 4 than 3, is proving himself to be a problem that will continue to stain this franchise as long as he's involved. Every which way you turn or Google to be more specific, Jake Seal's name can be found attached to a lawsuit. Michael O'Hoven, who has produced the last two movies through Infinity Films, since he owns the rights to produce Jeepers Creepers movies, needs to stop associating with Jake seal and actually take a step back give a crap to put out a quality product because there's no reason why we have salva removed but now we have a new problem and that problem is coming in the form of nobody caring about quality more specifically a certain producer who is clearly just trying to make easy money remember this dude is already still involved with a lawsuit from jeepers creepers 4 so it's like bro you need to get out of here this dude has got to go there is no reason whatsoever why we can't sit down and get a quality Jeepers Creepers movie with people who are capable of producing movies and they're deciding to do this. So again, it's not a matter of them not being a possibility because they are a possibility. You have to start caring about the product that you're putting out. And Jake Seal is somebody who all these lawsuits that I keep seeing him associated with, this dude needs to go. He's a detriment to the franchise, but... If Michael O'Hoven doesn't care, if nobody involved with this IP who has the rights to make these movies don't care, they'll keep putting out these terrible, low-budget, straight-to-DVD type movies with little to no effort behind them. Because not all straight-to-DVD things are bad. That's not true. But when you clearly are displaying that you don't care, you have stuff like this. But luckily, an actress like Eva Green, she, of course, does care. 
<laughs> Jumping into Scream 7, the last thing we're going to talk about is this theory for Scream 7 that was shared with me on Twitter. Now, I tweeted out a casting idea of Rose Byrne potentially playing Leslie Mocker in Scream 7. And someone named Worship Me at the Altar, shout out to you, suggested a fun way to make Sydney important to the story from the killer's perspective. I've stated countless times, and I still do, I think Leslie is the way to go for Scream 7. And this user chimed in to say, what if Leslie's ultimate goal by the end of this is to be a mother again? After she eliminates everyone, she blames for the crappy life she's had since she's related to Stu, one of the first Woodsboro killers, of course. She's already lost her son, Vince, but Sydney has something she wants, which is kids. So Leslie could, in theory, in my mind, I'm just sh shooting off of the mouth of my own at this point. Leslie, in theory, could send a pair of delusional people from that from that subreddit who think that Sam committed the crimes in not only Woodsboro, but also New York now to stalk Sam, Tara, Gale, Chad, Mindy, etc. All the other people who are being stalked besides Sam, they're being stalked because they've been convinced by Leslie that these people helped Sam get away with it. Not that they weren't already thinking it themselves, but Leslie has convinced them even further. So that, again, is the delusion that Leslie will be feeding to those idiots. And while they are doing that, Leslie will also be donning the ghost face mask, going to where Sydney is, getting Sydney involved by kidnapping her children and luring her back to Woodsboro. Sydney, of course, would conveniently hook up with Gail, Tara, and the rest of the survivors who are dealing with these other pair of killers. Those two killers could die midway. Sydney, of course, is only here looking for her kids, so she assumes that these two know where her kid is, but they, they don't. They didn't even know that Leslie was doing this. Leslie, after these two killers die midway, reveals herself, goes over her plan to frame Christina Carpenter, kill everyone, and get to be a mother again to two kids, since I believe Sydney has a couple kids, right? She doesn't just have one, she has a couple. So Leslie would be like the third killer that gets revealed, but she's all by herself at this point. She's going to explain how she was the one who sent these two other killers after Sam, Tara, etc. She went after Sydney and her kids. And her whole ultimate goal is to once again just have this revenge against these people who do nothing but bring about trouble for everyone else around them while they themselves do nothing but profit off of the tragedies. But no one seems to care about the other people who really shouldn't be having these terrible lives the way they do, like Leslie, who in theory is an innocent bystander, but nobody cares because you are their sister of a serial killer, so they treat you like trash. So you get to eliminate the people you blame your problems on, and you get to steal the peaceful life from Sydney Prescott that you think she never should have had. And you get to frame Christina Carpenter because Christina would reveal during this movie that she knew all along what Billy and Stu were up to in 96 and she did nothing to stop this. You guys let me know down in the comment section below what you think about all this. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notification, and there's a video in the description. I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews I'm going to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.